In this video, we're going to be doing example problems two, four, and six from the homework. I want to do a quick recap though. Uh, our goal is to figure out how much heat is being absorbed or released in a process. Uh, and sometimes it takes multiple steps. So if a, a solid is heating up or cooling down, if something's melting or freezing, uh, if a liquid is increasing in temperature or decreasing in temperature, if a, a liquid or a gas is boiling or condensing, or if a gas is heating up, we have different equations for each. So I label them A, B, C, D, and E. And for A, C, and D, they're all gonna be the same because we have changes in temperature here. So we got change in temperature for A, C, and D. So we could use our change in temperature equation. And they'll just all have different Cs. But when we are melting or freezing something, we have to use our enthalpy of fusion equation. And if we are boiling or condensing a substance, we have to use our enthalpy of vaporization. So let's jump into our, our first question, number two, and figure out what's going on here. So it says, how much energy does it take to cool 240 grams of liquid water that is 21 degrees Celsius to ice that is zero degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna quickly draw just a little sketch here. That has those five parts. And we gotta figure out where we are and where we're going. So we're starting out with liquid water at 21 degrees, so liquid would be here. So we're starting out right about here at 21 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna to try to end at ice, that is zero degrees. So remember, this is the, the freezing and melting point. So that's zero degrees. Zero degrees here, it would still be water. Zero degrees here, it would be ice. So we are going from this point all the way down here and all the way to this point right there. So we got a two-step problem. So we're gonna to need to figure out the heat released when going from 21 degrees to zero degrees and then how much heat's released as it freezes. So let us start working on those equations here. Uh, we're gonna start with how much heat was released when we're going from 21 to zero degrees, and that will be uh, our Q. It'll be it'll be of heart C because we're a liquid here. So it'll be Q equals we got that change in temperature, C M delta T. And let's start plugging everything in. So our Q is going to equal, C is our specific heat. So our specific heat of water, we're gonna have to look at our table. Uh, yours is gonna be that nice typed one. I just wrote one up here. Uh, water, the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. So we're gonna put that right here. 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. We could see our mass straight from the question. Mass will always be given in the question. Mass is 240 grams. And our delta T, uh, I'm actually gonna solve our, our delta T over here so I have room for it. Our delta T is our final temperature minus our initial temperature. So temperature final minus temperature initial. So in this case, zero is our final and 21 is our initial. So it equals zero minus 21 or it equals negative 21 degrees Celsius. So we could plug that right in here. So we can bust our calculator out, figure out the amount of heat that's lost just in that little section. Four point one eight times two hundred forty times well, let's times negative twenty one, 
and this Q is going to equal about negative 21,067. And we'll just round to the nearest one. Now we have to figure out the energy released as we go from a liquid to a solid. So to do that, we are going to be using our enthalpy of fusion equals mass times our enthalpy of fusion. And we have the same mass, 240 grams, And our enthalpy of fusion, we need that table again. Here it is. Enthalpy of fusion of water is 334. I want you to take a note here. We're freezing it. So we are going from liquid to ice. We're freezing. So it will be a negative number, 334 joules Per gram and if we do that multiplication 240 times negative 334 we should get negative 80,160 now we just have to add these two numbers together to get our total Q so our answer is going to be Total Q is going to equal negative 80 or yeah, negative 80,160. And we're going to add a negative 21,067. And it'll give us negative 101,227 joules. So that's how we are going to answer question number two. And that is the total energy it takes for 240 grams of water at 21 degrees to become ice at zero degrees. Let's go on to question number four. And again, I'm going to draw a, a little sketch here so we can figure out, you know, where, where we are and what we're doing. All right, so this one is how much heat is released when five grams of liquid aluminum at its melting point. So we are liquid aluminum at our melting point right here. So that's, that's where we start. Is cooled to a solid at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're cooling again. So we'll be freezing. And this happens to be, I should put the temperature here, this happens to be at the melting point. So this will be 660 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna be going from 660 degree solid aluminum all the way down until we hit our final temperature of 25 degrees. So 25 degrees Celsius. So again, this one will just be a two part question as well. So let's start with this part here. So we're going to freeze our aluminum because we're going to a solid. So again, if we're freezing, it'll be enthalpy of fusion and we're losing enthalpy, so it'll be negative. So let's, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So let's write the equation down first. Heat is equal to mass times our enthalpy of fusion. Our mass is only five grams here. Again, mass is always going to be right from that, right from the question. And our enthalpy of fusion, again, it's going to come from our table. So we got to find aluminum enthalpy of fusion And that's if it's melting. We are freezing, so it'll be a negative number.
so negative 321. So let's find how much energy this takes to freeze. Five times negative 321, negative 1,605 joules. Now we need to figure out how much energy it takes to go from 660 degrees down to 25 degrees. So we have to use, because that's a change in temperature, we're gonna be using our change in temperature there. So we are gonna do, this heat here is equal to specific heat times mass times delta T. So let's start plugging things in. Specific heat of aluminum 0 0.897 joules per gram Celsius. Our mass is five grams again. And our change in temperature, let's calculate that up here. Our change in temperature is equal to our final temperature minus our initial temperature. And again, we're going to get a negative number because our final temperature is 25. Our initial temperature is 660. So our final, or sorry, our change in temperature would have to be 600, sorry, negative 635 degrees. So that's what we're plugging in right here. We are decreasing this aluminum 635 degrees Celsius. Plug all these in, 0 0.897 times 5 times negative 635, and we got negative 2,800, we're going to round it up, 48 joules. So if we wanted to get our total energy again. Let's write our total down. The total energy that is released here. So total Q is going to be negative 1,605 plus a negative. So we could say minus 2,848 and it will be negative 4,453 joules. All right, we got one more. Question number six is by far the longest, so let's take a look at that. In this one, we have 42.3 grams of ice and it is heated from negative 20 degrees Celsius to water vapor at 150 degrees Celsius. We are doing all five steps here. So this will be a considerably longer problem. We're going from ice, melting it, heating that water up, boiling it, and then heating that water vapor up. So I wanna mark some important numbers that we're gonna be using here. Our starting point's negative 20 degrees. So we're starting at a solid negative 20 degrees Celsius. And we are going to be ending as a gas at 150 degrees Celsius. But there's some other important numbers that we need to use here. It's melting point, and we should know this, the melting point for water is zero degrees. So these are gonna be zero degrees because there's no temperature change here. And the boiling point for water will be 100 degrees Celsius. So we, are going to do a five step problem here. How much energy does it take to heat that ice up? 
how much energy does it take to melt the ice? How much energy does it take to heat the liquid water up? Then how much energy does it take to boil the water? And then how much energy does it take to heat that water vapor up? So five steps. And you know what? We're going to use we're going to use these equations. So this will be heating up the ice. This will be melting. This will be our heating up the liquid. This will be right here, our boiling. And then we got our heating up the steam right there. So we can just use these equations. So let's start with, let me zoom out just a little bit. Let's start with solving for how much heat is absorbed when we heat that ice up. So this Q is going to equal our specific heat of ice. So we got to use the table because our specific heat of ice is different than our specific heat of water. So that C is 2.03 joules per gram Celsius. Our mass is going to stay the same for all of these. Right there. 42.3 grams. And our change of temperature. We're increasing in temperature, so again, we're increasing in temperature throughout this. So all our temperature changes will be positive. Uh, so we could also think about it as when we're done heating the ice up at zero, and when we start it's negative 20. So it'd be zero minus negative 20. We would have a temperature change of 20 degrees. So this Q is going to be 2.03 times 42.3 times 20. It's going to be about 1,717 joules of energy just to heat that ice cube up. So we got some more steps here. Our next step is the ice cube is at zero degrees. We need to now melt that ice cube. So we're going to be going from here to here now. So to melt that ice cube, same mass, let's plug that in, 42.3 grams. We need our enthalpy of fusion. Enthalpy of fusion is how much energy it takes for ice to go from liquid, or from a solid to a liquid. So uh, right here, our enthalpy of fusion of water, it's, it's the same as with ice, uh, will be 334 joules per gram. And it will be positive because it is absorbing that energy. It is melting. It is uh, another word we've used to describe that is it's endothermic. And let's figure out how much energy this one takes. 42.3 times 334, we should get 14,128 joules about. So now in our storyline, we have just melted that ice, but it is still zero degrees. So we have to heat that zero degree water to a hundred degree water in order for it to boil. So that's our next step here. So our Q is going to equal the specific heat of water. And where is this table here? Specific heat of water, 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. Our mass, 42.3 grams. And our change of temperature, our final temperature is 100. Our initial is zero. So our change in temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Let's do the math there real quick. 40, or sorry, not 41. 4.18 times 
42.3 times 100. So to heat all that water up from zero to 100 degrees takes 17,681 joules. Now what we gotta do, we got our water, it's 100 degrees. We need to boil that into a gas. So that's what enthalpy of vaporization comes from. So our Q is equal to our mass, 42.3 grams, times our enthalpy of vaporization. We need to, again, go back to our table here. For water, our enthalpy of vaporization, 2,260 joules per gram. 2,260 joules per gram. Throw that in our calculator. 42.3 times 2260. And 95,598 joules. We're on our last step now. We just need to heat that water vapor. It's at 100 degrees. We just need to heat it to 150 degrees and that's where we're ending. So let's do that right here. Q equals specific heat of water vapor. Water vapor specific heat, 2.01 joules per gram Celsius. times the mass of 42.3 grams, times our change in temperature. We're gonna end at 150, and we're starting at 100. So 150 minus 100, our delta T is 50 degrees. I think delta T is what a lot of people struggle with the most. You have to subtract your final, your, uh, you have to start with your final temperature and subtract your initial temperature to get that. So let's plug all these in. 2.01 times 42.3 times 50. And this one takes 4,251 joules. So now if I wanted to get my final answer, what do I gotta do other than add up the energy it takes to do all of these things together because that is what we're doing to get our negative 20 degree ice cube to be water vapor at 150 degrees. So let's throw all these in a calculator. 1,717 plus 14,128 plus 17,681 plus 95,598 plus 4,251 equals, and that will be our answer right there. Our total Q here, total heat absorbed, or the amount of heat we needed, was 133,375 joules of energy for a negative 20 degree ice cube, that is 42.3 grams, to become water vapor at 150 degrees.